He is so desperate to talk about anything else that he avoids talking about what's happening in our own country. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. We're back to question period today with Justin trying out the new playbook from his new quote-unquote PR expert. The plan? Just keep calling PR a liar. Let's get into it. After eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost, Mr. Speaker. He said that doubling the national debt would have no effect because interest rates were low. But those same deficits have fueled interest rates increases and next year we will spend 52 billion dollars a year that's three thousand dollars per capita in debt service that's more than we'll be spending on health why is the prime minister st spending more for bankers than for nurses the right honorable prime minister mr speaker since last week more and more Canadians are having trouble believing the leader of the opposition. Let me bring back the true facts. Canada's debt is the lowest in the G7. We have the best debt to GDP ratio in the G7 and inflation keeps going down while maintaining services that Canadians rely on. The conservative leader would cut child care services to seniors, benefits, uh, and care for children. We will continue to invest. We're there for Canadians. We will continue to make responsible investments. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. So this is the new playbook, everybody. Call Pierre a liar. I guess that's the secret to unlocking Generation Z and Millennials. Well, I'm a millennial and I can tell you that's not it. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, um, yes, Justin Trudeau hired a new PR expert, a new director of communications that will report directly to him. And this guy's job is to fix the polls. <laughs> Good luck with that, buddy. Yeah. And who is that guy? Max Valaket. And he apparently has spent decades in the marketing sector and comes armed with expertise and understanding millennials and Generation Z or Z, you know, like the rest of us say. Does that look like a guy who understands millennials or Gen Z? No. Give me a break. No. He looks like a guy that, that understands an episode of House. You wouldn't believe the crap people let me get away with. So it says, amid slumping poll numbers, Trudeau has appointed a new executive communications director with expertise in, quote, understanding millennials and Generation Z, unquote. A recent Abacus data survey revealed that millennials are now almost twice as likely to support conservatives over liberals, while 32% of Generation Z currently favors conservatives compared to 24% for liberals. That's his base, everybody. This is why Trudeau has panicked and hired a dude that is allegedly an expert on this. Max Valaket will likely be tasked with trying to reverse those trends. Valaket founded Youthography, a Toronto-based youth market research company, and also worked with Benzamon Byrne, a Toronto-based advertising agency. One of Canada's largest independent agencies, Benzamon Byrne, has counted both the Liberal Party of Canada and Liberal Party of Ontario as clients. Yeah, one thing to note about that, um, that organization, Youthography, um, it, it didn't do well. <laughs> it's gone. So, um, you know, if we wanted to continue on in this article, which we don't, um, there's a bit here where it says University of Ottawa, where this guy allegedly went to school, counted him as like one of the top 100 influential Canadians in communications in 2005, 18 years ago. So this is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy that's going to reverse... Trudeau's fortunes and you're wondering how much he gets paid between 103 
and one hundred and sixty six thousand dollars of our taxpayer money that's how much he gets paid. is it taxpayer have we confirmed that he's the director of the pervy council no yes he's a director of communications that sits on the pervy council office no that's awful and there you go i'm sorry i'm shocked like literally shocked because i just kind of assumed it would be the liberal party paying him out of their coffers because you know they're trying to here he is director of communications it. prime minister's office no there you go so we're paying this guy our tax money again being wasted you know what you want to know what millennials and gen, gen z want i will tell you for free they want to be able to afford to feed their families they want to be able to start families first of all and then to be able to feed them to house them to clothe them and to have a little bit of money left over you know just to put away a little nest egg for when they get older or maybe if there's an emergency that's all we want we're simple simple people but no, Trudeau's come in here to raise the price of everything. People are not going to be able to afford their mortgages. People can barely afford to feed their kids. What is going on? What's going on is Trudeau is panicking and he's using our taxpayer money to try and fix his problems, which won't be fixed. Mr. Speaker, that's false. Seniors are having to cut now and other Canadians too, uh, when it comes to groceries, for example. The director of Quebec Food Bank said that the situation is unprecedented and dramatic. 61% of food banks were running short of supplies. That's the poverty after eight years of this government who's boosted food prices with his inflationist spending and his carbon tax. Will he reverse those policies so Canadians can afford to eat? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's getting a bit hard to believe what the opposition leader is saying because instead of accelerating the enactment and the passage of Bill C-56, which would help Canadians with more competition in the grocery sector, he held up its passage. He found ways to slow that bill down and that bill could help Canadians we will continue to help Canadians out. We will invest in the economy, in supports for Canadians, while staying on a responsible financial course. I love they're relying on this Bill C-56 as their, this is going to fix the grocery problem. It's Bill. not. It's not. And that's why the Conservatives voted against it. Because you want to fix the grocery problem? Get rid of the carbon tax. You are literally adding a tax at every single step of the production and shipping process when it comes to food. And then you are passing that along to the end user being Canadians. Well, and Champagne even admitted, you know, they're not trying to lower the grocery prices. They're trying to stabilize <laughs> the grocery prices. As if throwing a knife at it is going to do anything. So this is this is what they're trying to do. And and the bill, to remind everybody, all it does is increases the investigation powers of the Competition Bureau. That's it. And you want to talk about holding up a bill? What's going on in the Senate with Opposition Bill C-234? The Liberal senators are introducing amendments and then immediately adjourning so that it can't be discussed. Yep, and then they have to schedule a, another session to actually debate the amendment. And that is deliberately to hold up the bill. If the Liberals cared about Canadians at all, if they cared about our strife, if they cared about us being able to afford groceries, they would push this bill through. But instead of saying, you know what, Conservatives, Bloc, NDP, that was a really good idea for a bill. We should pass this and make life better for Canadians. The Liberals are doing everything they can to step in its way. Yep. And with that for, with that free trade agreement with, with Ukraine as well, they're doing everything they can to try to find a win over the Conservatives. So mark my words, that was a poisoned bill. Meaning, they put a clause in there, which was the carbon pricing clause, to try to trap the Conservatives into voting against it. And the Conservatives did vote against it because that's something stupid that you shouldn't be attaching to a free trade bill. It's not in any other free trade bill that we have. So why is it in this one? We don't even do that much trade with Ukraine. The reason why it was there is so they knew the Conservatives would vote against it and then they can try and jump on it, virtue signal, and say, how dare you vote against Ukraine? They didn't intend that bill 
to pass with unanimous consent from the beginning. If they had just left it alone and said, you know, we just want to renew it, which they didn't have to because it was already in there, then the conservatives would have said, yep, that's fine. Because they wouldn't have been able to vote against that because it was their bill that they put in while they were in government. So this is what the liberals are doing. Like they, they can't get Pierre and the conservatives on anything legitimate. So now they're literally getting dirty. But you know what? I don't think this is going to sway the voters' minds. And even if they have another two years of doing this, which I don't think they will, but even if they did, I don't think it's going to sway the minds of voters. The only people who are going to believe this garbage from this new PR guy from for the Liberals, these people are already voting Liberal. These are your diehard Liberal fans that you know, I know, we all know them and nothing will change their mind. It's impossible to believe anything this prime minister says. First, when he gave $15 billion for one battery plant, he said there'd be no foreign workers. It was all a rumor. And then he said it would be one. And then his minister said there'd be a few. Now the company says it will be 900. This is $15 billion, $1,000 in cost for every single family. And now they're giving the money for 900 workers to do foreign workers to do a job that the Canadian Building Trades Union said could be done by our people at a cost of $300 million of lost wages for our union workers. Will the Prime Minister release the contract so we find out how many Canadian tax dollars are going to foreign replacement workers? The right honourable Prime Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to have to uh, correct the facts uh, in this House of Commons, given uh, what the Leader of the Opposition continues to say. 2,300 local Canadian construction jobs and 2,500 permanent Canadian jobs when the Stellantis plant is completed. That's right. There'll be 3,000 jobs in the region when the North Bolt plant in Quebec is completed. Uh, you'd think the Leader of the Opposition would support those, but he doesn't. No, He's he uncontrollable doesn't. urge to make everything a partisan issue means he's not supporting the investments that are going to help in Windsor, in St. Thomas, uh, in Quebec, or elsewhere across the country. Right. He wants cuts. We want investments in the future of Canadians. Dude, when even your mainstream media moguls are reporting that, yeah, they are hiring 1,500 or 1,600 foreign workers, like, Pierre's not making it up. No. He, again, he's relying on your funded media to, to, <laughs> to give him the facts. And notice that Trudeau didn't even talk about the foreign workers in his response. He's just like, oh, well, you know, PR is voting against all of these jobs that are going to happen at the end. Yeah, he's asking, why are you using these 1600 positions for foreign workers? Why not give them to Canadians? Now, the argument is, well, they have to bring them over from Korea to help set up the plant. Why? Why? I'm sure all of us know somebody who at some point in their lives was a plant manager and they were sent to a country to set up a plant. One person. You yeah, can not, understand. Not 1,600. Right. You can understand one guy coming over to set up the plant and to make sure that the, the people they were trained properly, fine. But 1,600. That doesn't make sense. The leader of the opposition. This prime minister has forced 7 million Canadians to cut back on their diet right. to a point where they are no longer healthy. Yeah. This prime minister has forced Canadians to cut their budget for food and therefore a record smashing 2 million people are lined up at a food bank every month around corners in ways that we haven't seen since the great depression. That's the austerity he's opposed on Canadians. Now he wants to quadruple the carbon tax on the farmers who bring us our food. We have a common sense conservative bill, C-234. Will the Prime Minister stop blocking this bill in the Senate, let it pass so that our farmers can produce food and our people can afford to eat it? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, if the Leader of the Opposition actually cared about Canadians being able to afford their food, uh, they wouldn't have dragged their heels uh, on the passage of C-56, uh, that is increasing competition in the grocery sector. Uh, but indeed, Mr. Speaker, there are a lot of factors that, del that deliver higher food prices, uh, not just for Canadians, for people around the world. And one of the key ones is Russia's continued illegal invasion of Ukraine, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we we can affirm clearly that we will stand with Ukraine with everything necessary for as long as necessary. As we saw last week, no conservative politician can say the same in this house. 
Is me or is Trudeau starting to talk like William Shatner? Well, like that quote unquote speech he just gave, it seriously makes me want to barf. Like the way he's saying, oh, the conservatives don't stand with Ukraine. It It's all garbage. The reason they voted against that trade bill, you know, the one that the conservatives started back in in Harper's era, the reason they voted against it is because you guys poisoned the bill by adding some carbon tax junk to it. Well, and here's the other thing. Please explain to me how the Russian and Ukraine war affects the price of food that is being grown in Saskatchewan. Please explain that to me. Explain how, like, this is the thing. They're saying that, oh, food prices, it's being caused by the war in Ukraine. Well, okay. Um, why hasn't food gone up to a ridiculous price with the other wars? Remember Desert Storm? Food prices didn't go through the roof. Well, it was a desert. Yeah, but it was over oil. So, like, I don't know what they're trying to say is driving up food prices between the war of Russia and Ukraine. Like, give me a break. First, it was global inflation. That's what was driving up the food prices. And then, you know, that ex excuse wasn't washing. So then they then the, then the Ukraine war started. So they said, oh, well, it's the Ukraine war. And then they said the price of gas is going up because the Ukraine war. Well, the price of gas has, has come down a little bit. So yeah. now what's your excuse? Well, the only excuse that they haven't given, which is the answer, is government incompetence. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Actually, we are the only party that has stood with Ukraine, Mr. Speaker. This Prime Minister, I understand what he's doing. He has imposed so much misery here at home, whether by doubling housing costs, forcing people into tent encampments, uh, forcing two million people to go to a food bank. These are the problems here at home at the kitchen table. He is so desperate to talk about anything else that he avoids talking about what's happening in our own country. So will he answer the question? Will he take his tax off our farmers so our people can afford to eat? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition full well knows that 97 per cent of fuel emissions uh, in the agricultural sector, in the farming sector, are already exempt from our price on pollution. But he is so desperate to try and score partisan points that he actually refused to stand in support of something v Volodymyr Zelensky asked us for in this House. How is the Leader of the Opposition explaining to Ukrainian Canadians right across the country that he no longer stands with Ukraine on things that they need right now to win this war against, uh, against Russia? Okay, so he's sitting there saying, oh, well, you know, this is something that Vladimir Zelensky asked us in this house, and, you know, they're, they're against, um, you know, doing this to, to help them win the Ukraine war. I'm sorry, please explain to me how carbon pricing is going to help Vladimir Zelensky win the war against Russia. Are you absolutely kidding? And you're the one, you're the one, and your party... You guys are the ones that are saying, oh, Pierre's lying all the time. Are you kidding me? And let's talk. Let's talk about that exemption for farmers. This information is from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, which is a nonpartisan citizens advocacy group dedicated to lower taxes, less waste, and accountable government. Um... So the headline of this article is expanding carbon tax exemption would save farmers $1 billion parliamentary budget office or PBO. Uh, it says the Canadian taxpayers federation is demanding immediate passage of legislation in the Senate to expand carbon tax exemptions for agriculture in today's parliamentary budget officer analysis shows it would save farmers almost $1 billion through 2030. Making it more affordable for farmers to produce food will make it more affordable for families to buy food, says Franco Terrazano, CTF Federal Director. The House of Commons passed legislation to expand the carbon tax exemption for farmers. In fact, MPs have passed that legislation twice. 
So this was interesting. I did not know this previously, but in 2020, there was a bill in the House, and this was the previous session of Parliament. Um, so if you go looking for this bill, it was um, prior to the last election. Uh, anyways, it's called Bill C-206, and it was sponsored by Conservative Philip Lawrence from Northumberland, Peterborough South. And it passed through the House of Commons, but it died on first reading in the Senate. So we don't know with absolute certainty why Bill C-206 died in the Senate, but we have a pretty good idea by piecing a few things together. If we look at the House calendar for um, that year, which was 2021, June 23rd, 2021, which was the first reading in the Senate, that was the last day that the houses were sitting. And then after that, we went to election and election was called over the summer. So because an election was called, all bills in the House and in the Senate are just stopped dead in their tracks. And we suspect that's what happened with this Bill C-206. That's, that's dollars to donuts. That's probably what happened. So the Canadian Taxpayers uh, Federation is actually pushing for Bill 234 to be passed in the Senate. And Bill C-234 is what they're saying will save farmers $1 billion a year. So here's the interesting thing, folks. The Conservatives put a similar bill, Bill C-206, into the House and then up into the Senate back in 2020 to try to save us all this misery of high food prices. And it got shut down when the Liberals called a snap election. And now the Liberals are trying to block Bill C-234 in the Senate again. So is a snap election around the corner? This time I hope so, because I know the Conservatives will get in and fix it. Yeah, they'll just rip it right out. Anyway, it's pretty obvious who's lying here and it's pretty obvious what the playbook is and that's the problem it is so transparent what the liberals playbook is we've noticed a massive shift on social media in the last week of just a all-out offensive of vitriol and accusations and liar liar pants on fire finger waving from the liberals and the thing is is they're trying to define who pierre is now they're a year late. All of this strategists are saying, you guys, you should have done this a year ago. But you didn't. You allow Pierre to tell Canadians and show the Canadians exactly who he is. And what do we always say on this channel? Be first. Pierre was first to the gate to show Canadians this is who Pierre Polyev is. And the problem is, is now the liberals are trying to come back at him and label him this. It just makes them look absolutely terrible. And I think this is probably going to have the opposite effect in the polls that they're hoping for. And if the Liberals spent less time on trying to smear Pierre and more time on actually trying to help Canadians, maybe they would be able to get some votes organically. <laughs> <laughs>